The Tunnels Below by Nadine Wild Palmer, published by Pushkin Press. I hope you're sitting comfortably because I'm going to read um, the first chapter of my new book, The Tunnels Below, published by Pushkin Press. Chapter One, A Marvellous Surprise. Have you ever woken up one morning and felt like everything has changed overnight? That's because it has. Cecilia Hudson Gray woke up on the morning of her 12th birthday to the gurgling sound of the radiators coming on. It was a frosty March morning and the windows wept with condensation as the heating kicked in to settle the cold. Cecilia looked out of her window and was met by two black eyes and a sharp black beak. She inhaled a large sniff and pulled her quilt around her tightly. One for sorrow, she thought, remembering the first line of an old nursery rhyme. She watched the brave bird poking about on the window ledge, parading jauntily along like it was performing a circus act. As the magpie dipped forwards preparing for flight, Cecilia's brain also swooped into action as it occurred to her that there might be presents waiting downstairs. She leapt out of bed, her quilt flying out behind her like a cape and thudded through the house like a rumble of thunder, followed by her sister, Hester, who must have heard Storm Cecilia passing. Happy birthday, chimed her parents as Cecilia wedged herself in at the breakfast table. Thanks guys, she replied, pulling the sleeves of her pyjama top over her hands like mittens, shielding them from the chill of the morning and the heat of the hot cup of sweet tea in front of her. She picked it up and blew on it gently, tufts of steam rising off the surface. You stretch your sleeves and ruin your PJs doing that, you know, her dad warned, pl planting an apparently unwanted kiss on her mess of hair. Cecilia responded by brushing away the invisible imprint of the kiss as her sister entered the room. Hester sidled up to Cecilia and whispered in her ear, Nappy turd day! and sat down, smiling smugly. Cecilia put down her cup up. Cecilia put down her cup and began a mocking slow clap. Very funny. How long did it take you to come up with that one, Fester? Hester refused a dignified response and stuck her finger in her nose, then reached out to wipe the fruits of her labour on Cecilia's arm. Dad! Cecilia wailed like a baby. Stop it, you two. Hester, it's not fair if you don't have enough to go round, their dad, Lyle, joked, then returned to making pancakes. Meanwhile, the girl's mum, Alice, squirrelled away at the crossword, nibbling the end of her pencil. Drat, she exclaimed. I've made a mistake. You are a mistake, taunted Cecilia. Uh, no, that's not a nice thing to say, Missy. It might be your birthday, but that's no way to talk to your mum. Her dad came rushing at her, brandishing a greasy spoon. He held it up to Cecilia's chin, grinning from ear to ear. What have you done with my daughter, he said playfully. And when are you bringing her back? Never. Cecilia hissed dramatically, squeezing her eyes into a villainous glare. Why? 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 Lyle broke down into a mock lamentation, dramatically falling to his knees and reaching his arms towards the sky, spoon falling to the floor, butter dripping everywhere. You're such a doofus, Dad, Cecilia chuckled through another sip of sweet tea. You're cleaning that up, by the way, Lyle, said Alice, without looking up from her crossword. No, I'm not, said Lyle. Tatty, to the rescue. Tatty was their cat, and he hopped onto the floor as quick as a flash at the mention of his name. Lyle retrieved the spoon and flung it into the sink, while Tatty licked the greasy patch of kitchen floor. Lyle flipped the last pancake and plonked it into a pile he had already made. All right, all right, grubs up, dig in you scallies, said Lyle, as he put the pile of steaming hot pancakes in the centre of the table. Eat till your eyes are bulging out of your head. We've got a long day. Ten minutes later, Cecilia was picking at the remains on her plate, breakfast now resting happily in her stomach, when she was distracted by Hester climbing up on, the ch on her chair. Hester cleared her throat <clears throat> and wiped her sticky hands on her pyjamas and through a mouth of smudged with raspberry jam was about to speak when Cecilia interrupted her. What are you doing? she asked. Hester, even at the tender age of eight, fancied herself as a bit of a scholar 
and found any occasion where people were gathered together as a chance to recite a poem or a speech she had prepared earlier. She was going to write speeches for a politician when she, she grew up. Hester unfolded a small piece of paper and began all writing. We are gathered here today. You pinch that, that's not your writing, heckled Cecilia. Hester continued undeterred. To celebrate the birth and life of my dear sister, Cecilia Hudson Gray. And I would like to personally mark the occasion with a gift and this wonderful speech I have written. Thank you. She sat back down. There was a light scattering of applause. That was a lovely gesture, Hester, said their mum, patting her on the back. So, Cecilia, do you think you deserve a present? Said Hester. Her eyes were bright and excited. I hope you like it. If you don't, it won't go to waste. I can always keep it for myself. She disappeared from the room for a moment and came back holding a crumpled brown paper bag that had been very badly taped shut with a lot of sellotape. Hester dumped the present on Cecilia's lap. Here. Cecilia could see how excited she was, but knew that Hester had previous as far as presents were concerned. For Christmas, she'd given her a broken alarm clock from the 1970s. Oh, it's heavier than it looks. Thanks, Hess. When Cecilia finally managed to open the present, it was surprisingly marvellous. Hester had saved up her pocket money. That is, used what was left of her pocket money after she bought herself a new fountain pen to buy a vintage marble from the old bric-a-brac store down the road from their granny. She had seen it one afternoon when she and granny had gone in to the shop for a snoop. There was something magical about the way it caught the light and Hester and Granny had decided it was super special and that Cecilia simply had to have it for her birthday. The marble was large, not quite as big as a tennis ball, but on the way there. It had an oily layer on its outer surface onto which a pattern of silvery white markings had been etched. When Cecilia held it up to the light, she could see through a chip on its surface into a misty white centre with a constellation of silvery sparkles. It had an enchanting way of reflecting the colours around it, catching the pink on Cecilia's pyjamas and the umber in Hester's eyes. Wow, cool. Looks like the universe, doesn't it? Hester said. Cecilia stared at it. Yeah, thanks Hess, it's gorgeous. Cecilia secretly thought that she was getting a bit old for toys, but in this case she'd make an exception. It was more of a curiosity than a toy, plus it looked like it was made of glass and children aren't usually allowed to play with things made of glass. She was definitely old enough to look after something fragile. Let's have a look, Missy, said her dad, holding out his hand. Cool, that's a corker that is. Hess, nice one. And they high-fived. I thought you could put it in this. Hester handed her sister a piece of gold string with a tangle of wires at the end. What is it? Asked Cecilia. It's a necklace, dummy. Look, it fits in here like this. Hester demonstrated how to insert the marble into the contraption she had devised and handed it back to her sister. Then you can wear it on special occasions. Wow, Hess, that's really lovely and so creative, Cecilia said, trying to hide some of her discomfort. She had already guessed what was coming next and she didn't like the idea. Thanks, I knew you'd like it. And the best part is, it's a special occasion today because it's your birthday, so you get to wear it all day. Cecilia winced a little. She really did love the marble, but she wasn't sure she wanted to wear it. After all, it wasn't that cool. It sort of looked like something that had been pulled out of the rubbish, tangled up with all the string and wire. But she really didn't want to hurt Hester's feelings. And it was only for one day, and she could always tuck it under her jumper. Lucky me, she said dryly, with a wink and a cheesy smile. Hester was clearly ecstatic. Cecilia shot her dad a look that cried, save me. But he just shrugged in reply. Cecilia unwrapped the presents from her mum and dad after that a sketchbook, some watercolours and a brand new junior microscope set. We know you love all that technology and stuff. iPads, J-pads, K-pads and whatnot, joked her dad. But we wanted to get you something a bit more hands-on. Something that would inspire you, added her mum. Yeah, something that didn't need charging up, said her dad. I love it, guys. I absolutely love it. Thanks, Cecilia smiled. Right then, you lovely lot, let's get a groove on. 
There's a world out there waiting for us, said their mum. Once again, there was thunder heard shaking through the floors of the house. 